Michael tells me he swears by buses in London. I know I was surprised as well. Well, I don't think this is what Jeremy Corbyn had in mind when he put buses on the political agenda this week. Although it is the right colour, still, there's afternoon tea and Andrew donated his finest vintage. Theresa May will be hoping she returns from checkers this week with a full cabinet, even if it is a bumpy journey. Proving she was in the driving seat this week, she delivered a statement on the European Council to MPs in Parliament, which was accompanied by a miraculous third-way plan on Brexit, even if it did come after Michael Gove had ripped up half of the first one. The EU and its member states will want to consider our proposals seriously. We both need to show flexibility to build the deep relationship after we have left that is in the interests of both our peoples. Our white paper will set out detailed proposals for a sustainable and close future relationship between the UK and the EU, a partnership that means that the UK will leave the single market and customs union, but a partnership which supports our shared prosperity and security. The PM's steering of Brexit was skillfully mocked by the Labour leader. We look forward to the much vaunted third way on customs that the Prime Minister hopes will, re will unite her Cabinet, because the current chaos at the heart of government leaves us facing crucial, unanswered questions. And those on her back benches were starting to fill in the mystery tall blanks. Will the Prime Minister table urgently a full free trade agreement governing both goods and services and ask the EU do they want it or do they want no deal. Either way, we must take back control of our laws, our money and our borders. Critically, just as the PM starts to nudge things along, up pops Jacob Rees-Mogg. Writing in the Telegraph, the Tory Brexiteer warned her not to let the wheels come off like 18th century leader Sir Robert Peel. Cue the inevitable leadership talk, which, Moggy says, is fake news. But he was emboldened, though, warning that the UK can never be a member of a single market on goods. I don't think that would meet the Conservative Party's manifesto, and I think the British electorate would have a right to complain, which is why I think that the government won't do this. I think it would be essentially tearing up the manifesto and keeping us as a vassal state. A backlash against Jacob Rees-Mogg ensued on Twitter, although not from the Foreign Secretary. Corbyn has been accused of wanting to have his cake and eat it. And at their conference this week, Unite, the party's biggest financial backer, didn't rule out a second referendum on the Brexit deal, which is awkward for Jeremy because he has. This is not the moment for putting ourselves in a straitjacket. So to be clear, we are not calling for a second referendum. But like the Labour Party, we remain open. We remain open to the possibility of a vote on any deal the Tories come back with. There were penalties in Westminster too this week. Honestly, it's like buses. You wait for ages and then two come along at once. Vote Leave, the official Brexit campaign in the referendum, are expected to be fined for overspending. And Matthew Elliott, the former boss, got his rebuttal in early. They've listened to one side of the story. So these so-called whistleblowers who came out in uh, March, you know, they've been into the Electoral Commission to have interviews. We've offered to go in for interviews. And when we look at all the evidence, all the facts, actually they stack up on our side. Secretary got her knuckles wrapped after misrepresenting an official report into Universal Credit and she was forced to make an embarrassing apology to MPs. I mistakenly said that the NAO had asked for the rollout of the Universal Credit to continue at a faster rate and to be speeded up. In fact, the NAO did not say that, Mr Speaker, and I want to apologise. 
What I had meant to say was that the NAO had said that there was no practical alternative to continuing with universal credit. When Jeremy Corbyn used all six of his questions at PMQs to ask about buses, Tory MPs were relieved. I mean, he could have asked anything. Brexit? Universal credit? Since 2010, her government has cut 46% from bus budgets in England, number, passenger numbers are falling, and amongst elderly and disabled, it's fallen by 10%. Her government belatedly committed to keeping the free bus pass, but a bus pass isn't much use if there isn't a bus. What we have seen about across the country is that we are seeing that as people's working habits are changing, that we are seeing people uh, a less usage of buses uh, around the country. But this is something. This is something that we work with local authorities on. Have we just gone round in circles? I found something on the web. Brexit negotiations going around in circles. Yeah, thanks, Siri. You seem to be making your voice heard this week. In the Euphrates Valley and surrounding areas. I found something on the web for in Syria. Syrian democratic forces supported by premonition. Um, what a very rum business that is. An intervention. No, but uh, I do apologise for that. Uh, uh, it is very rare that you're heckled by your own mobile phone. Indeed. Uh, on this occasion, uh, it, is a, it is a new parliamentary convention, without a doubt. That's me sold on bus travel. Now just to come into this week's team. Take me to Neil Mansions, please.